The story of We Buy Cars really is an incredible homegrown business success story from startup to a chunky multi-billion rand transaction with transaction capital. That's after the competition authorities uh, got in the way of a previous attempt by NASPAS, clearly an asset that investors see real long-term value in. Now, We Buy Cars is a uh, principal trader of used vehicles through its vertically integrated e-commerce and physical infrastructures like a vehicle warehouse. I've walked through uh, many of them uh, in and around Gauteng, uh, sometimes just to go and kick the bricks on some vehicles uh, that I've been eyeing for some time uh, with nothing better to do over the weekend. It's good fun. They offer finance, insurance, and all other allied products. And it's a very unique model. And it is certainly set to benefit from the current market context in South Africa, which is one in which private vehicles are still vitally important. Our public uh, sector transport is just not uh, up to scratch or anywhere where it needs to be uh, in the short to medium term. Farn van der Velt is uh, founder and executive director of We Buy Cars. And Farn, it's great to have you on Business Talk here on Business Tech. How are you? I'm um, very well. Thanks, Michael. Thank you for having me. I want to talk firstly, and there's a lot going on in the country with the riots, and uh, we'll get to that. But COVID uh, preempted that. How has COVID impacted the day to day business that we buy cars? Um, well, when when uh, we first learned of COVID, we, we didn't think much of it, but it certainly had a, a huge impact um, on our business, uh, especially during that first lockdown period. You, you, no one knew what to expect, and, and we prepared for the worst. Um, we had internal chats about um, uh, um, laying off staff, etc. cetera, and, and thank, thankfully we never had to do that. Um, we were very agile. We, we adapted to the new way of, of doing things. And um, I guess, you know, the saying uh, of this opportunity in adversity has never been truer. Um, we use that, um, you know, to, 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 um, to find out what, are, what we are capable of and, and to, to de develop some of our strengths. Um, during that period, we, we, we launched our new online auctioning um, system, which is serving us really well. And, and luckily, being a very entrepreneurial business, you know, we can make real quick decisions and, and change business rules overnight. And, and that's what you need to survive. Absolutely. Flexibility, being nimble on your feet, uh, despite being a business that is 20 years old this year. I believe it's your 20th anniversary. And while doing some research for this, I'd expected a, a far younger history. So, you know, two decades. Uh, how challenging has it been for you as the, the head of a company that celebrates its 20th anniversary this year? Um, it's always been challenging, um, but um, that's our mentality. We we, we still today have this mindset of being the underdog um, and, 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 and fighting, fighting the big guys. Uh, so um, certainly it has been challenging and uh, uh, many people think of We Buy Cars as being an overnight success. Uh, but as you mentioned, we are celebrating our 20 year anniversary and it, it really flew by. Um, but in those early days of We Buy Cars, we, my brother and I, we, we did everything ourselves. We, we, we were the buyers of We Buy Cars. We, we did visit the clients wherever they were. We drove around with cell phones stuck to our heads all day long, um, taking calls. And when you finished with one call, you've got three missed calls. And you have to phone these people back. Um, and, 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 and we enjoyed you know, that part of the business, um, we, we got to meet all walks of life, um, see and really get to know your clients and what their needs are. Um, so uh, at the, there just came a point when we realized that for us to, to grow this business, we need to start trusting people to do this on our behalf. And, and it's, it's a little bit like, you know, leaving your baby with a babysitter for the first time. You're very worried and, and you want to make sure that that it's, it's looked after very well. Um, but, but we took that leap and it worked out very well for us. And today we have close to 200 buyers nationally, uh, you know, in all towns, wherever you are in South Africa, there's a We Buy Cars buyer uh, ready to buy your car. Um, and they're well-trained and, and we're proud, proud to say that they are delivering an even better service because we kept on developing yeah. um, uh, that over the years. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's been a nice journey, but it's not the end. We, we have a lots of plans for the future.
Yeah, still a long road ahead uh, for, for those uh, those times to be rolling down. And I just want to find out a little bit more about your early days with your brother uh, going out there, you know, kicking the tires, so to speak. Uh, petrol heads in the family. Where did the where did the love of cars come hmm. from? Well, um, it's an interesting one. You know, when we grew up, um, I wouldn't say that we were poor. My mother was a teacher and my father uh, worked for the government and, and for the CSIR at a point in time, but what we need, we always drove these dilapidated cars, which which tended to break down. I, I recall various incidents of standing next to the road with the under the bonnet fixing a car. Um, so so um, yeah, I had this burning desire to to improve our own vehicle situation, and and I learned a lot about cars. Um, my brother Dirk didn't like using or, or working on cars. Well, I quite enjoyed it. You know, I didn't mind getting stuck under the bonnet, getting my hands dirty and so on. But uh, I think I was in, in grade 10 or sta- the old standard eight yes. when, when I bought my first motorbike for, for 500 Rand and sold that for 550 Rand, which wasn't a great profit. Um, but after that one, I did a brilliant deal. I, I bought one for 800 Rand and uh, spent a little bit of money, about 100 or 200 Rand on it. And, and then sold it for 1,500. And I, I recall having that money in my hands and, and getting a real kick out of doing a successful deal. And, 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 and I guess that's, that's where it all started. You know, and I, I couldn't stay out of the classifieds, looking for bargains, um, trying to imagine what this little ads vehicle looked like. Because in those days, you know, it was just a printed ad with a landline number on. There weren't any photos. You know, Auto Trader didn't even exist in those years. <laughs> so, so yeah, you know, your imagination played a big role. But um, yeah, I, 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 I sometimes secretly went and found those people as if I were interested, even though I didn't have the money to to buy the vehicle, just just to get the experience in phoning and asking, you know, various questions to those sellers of vehicles. It's amazing how one can turn a, a childhood boyhood passion into this business and and I think you've now got into bed with another jockey in David Hurwitz and the rest of the team at Transaction Capital who have a similar entrepreneurial bent and uh, Transaction Capital recently concluded agreements to increase its shareholding in we buy cars to 74.9% slightly ahead of time so they obviously like what they saw under the hood can you just talk us through that relationship with Transaction Capital and, and what that means for you at at we buy cars uh, and how you your brother kind of mulled over who you're going to partner with yes um as you mentioned earlier we were um actually on track to do a deal with naspers but prior to that about five six years ago we did sell uh, a non-tone controlling share to a company called fletch capital now they more private equity not really in in um in the space um but what we found is that they, they added a lot of value to our company and, and we, we saw what it could do for us. And, and uh, about a year ago, um, they also introduced us to Transaction Capital. And, and um, with this new deal that's on the cards now, Fletch Capital will be exiting. So they'll be um, uh, the only other shareholder apart from me and Dirk in the end. And, and uh, we believe that, you know, well, what we found when we met these guys, uh, uh, David Hurwitz and, 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 and uh, Terry Keir and uh, from SA Taxi, um, as well as the founders, uh, Michael Mendelevich uh, uh, and, and those guys, you know, they are so entrepreneurial. Everything is possible. You know, they, they want to change the world. And, and uh, they have, you know, the, the businesses that they've grown over the years are um, tremendously successful. And, and we, we really believe they are uh, the right partner. Um, it, it's also a way of, of going into the listed space for us instead of doing a listing ourselves. So it's much easier. They are uh, well versed in that. Um, so I, th- I think it's it's a it's a win win for all. And and we've got great plans. I think we're going to do great things together. And you mentioned the 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 stake that Fledge Capital held, and we know private equity tend to be. Uh, medium-term holders uh, and partners for a five to seven-year period, then they've got to exit and return funds to to their limited uh, partner investors. In that process, uh, did you discuss with Fledge what the exit was going to be? It's almost like discussing how you're going to get divorced before you even get married. How did you find that? Well, um, 
We've got great relationships. Um, I have even invested in Fledge Capital myself, so so there's no hard feelings. Um, I think you know they they've added what they can to our business, and and it's a uh, just reach a point where we we all move on and 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 let our various companies you know grow even th- further. What do you think you're doing right as a business? You know, after all, NASPAS was very keen on your operations until fairly recently. Is it just that uh, it's a model that is really now? finally come of age and, and you were certainly one of the pioneers of this uh, launching 20 odd years ago yeah um I, what, what are we doing differently i think um sometimes it, it's it's what you don't do um so i would guess we never try to copy anyone we 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 never looked to the sides and saw another big business, a big motor company say, we want to be like them. We, mm. we sort of stay, stayed focused on our own business and, and improved um, a little bit here and there every day. And, and, and uh, um, we aimed at solving, uh, you know, real problems that customers have and, and just improving that uh, user experience uh, continuously. Um, and, and that's why We Buy Cars is totally different from anything else you'd find out there. And, and, and it works. People love it. People use it. Uh, we've grown our market share significantly. Uh, you know, we, we, I think we're reaching close to being double-digit uh, market share in the used car industry, which is significant. I don't think there are any um, uh, or there aren't many big players uh, who yeah. can say that. Yeah, but still lots of runway for growth ahead. And you've got, you, you know, the F&I uh, the finance and insurance side of the business. And I know Transaction Capital is very keen to bring its expertise into that. So it's beyond just buying and selling secondhand vehicles. So, so how does this all fit into your makeup and your long-term plan? Well, it's all about the consumer. And, and, and um, what, what uh, people don't realize is, is, you know, especially in this used vehicle space, there are, uh, a very, there's a very high percentage of first-time buyers who who needs to be well informed, and and if you're a, a responsible corporate citizen, you you'll take that responsibility seriously in in educating um, those clients and being really really transparent in 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 your offering. Um, so, uh, buying a motor car is not only about an asking price and having enough money to to pay the asking price. You know, there, there's so much more involved. Uh, you've got maintenance. You've got um, depreciations. There are so many aspects that you have to keep in mind. Uh, are you going to insure this vehicle? Do you want to put a tracking device in? Um, would there be a residual value at the end of the finance term? So, so um, all these offerings, you know, you can make so many mistakes along the way. And we believe if we we, we walk that journey with the client, you know, we we can have that client for life and, and offer really worthwhile products um, together with the vehicle. Trust. I think it really does boil down to trust because they, you know there's the old analogy about the second-hand car salesman who's uh, just put a bit of that anti-smoke in the in the engine just before we sold it and that kind of that is certainly not the experience of we buy cars. You've professionalized, you, you've brought a lot of trust into the market. Uh, from where you sit though, you also sit with a lot of data at your disposal. Have you noticed any new buying or selling trends that have been brought on by the pandemic? Um, yeah, absolutely. We we, we certainly have. Um, we we've got a lot less feet on our floor, um, a lot less physical visitors, people coming to browse, like you mentioned earlier. Um, I guess it's still because of of COVID. Uh, people take care and, and they are responsible. Um, but at the same time, the um, online visitors uh, doubled. Um, so so at the moment we have over three million site visits per month of which more than 1.1 million are unique visitors to our website. And, and that's nearly double what it was uh, uh, at the beginning of 2020. Um, we've also seen that the, the session du- duration online has increased um, significantly. Um, the number of vehicles we, we sell online has grown to, to close to 38%. Um, so, so that's someone who sees the car online um, and initiates the buying process online and only comes and collects the vehicle. Um, so wow. the decision is already made. And, and uh, it, it's purely done because we, we, we are transparent. We display whatever is wrong with the car. So all vehicles we sell go through a thorough uh, condition report through an independent service provider called DECRA. And, and we display that. Sometimes it counts in our favor because the client can see this car is perfect. 
But otherwise, uh, other times, you know, there are issues with the vehicle, but at least uh, it is displayed and, and disclosed mm -hmm. and, and also reflected in the asking price. So uh, you know what you're buying. Remarkable, because I think so many doubters might have said, there's certain things that you just can't sell online. Houses, cars, people need to go and drive them. They need to get in, in, in the car and feel it. But you are proving that wrong mm -hmm. if, you, if you have trust built into the system and, uh, and you offer uh, transparency, which you're doing in spades. And perhaps leading on from that uh, to your earlier point, you've launched this online car auction. It's a first for South Africa and in, in our market that I'm aware of. What's really the rationale behind this and what are your expectations for this business? Well, we have great expectations um, for this. And, and um, I think the, the, the op adoption rate of, of the consumer um, as to online purchasing has, has really accelerated over the last, um, let's call it 18 months. You know, I never imagined myself buying a pair of shoes online, and I now do. Um, and uh, I mean, the groceries are delivered to our doorstep, uh, uh, whatever you're ordering from the pharmacy, etc., and 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 uh, it's it's a booming industry. And um, from what we've seen overseas, is is um, the, the 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 automotive companies who are highly rated and growing fast uh, do the same. I'm talking about uh, Vroom in the US, uh, Kavak in in uh, South America. Um, you you have various European companies. Uh, who, who does the same and, and their vehicles are only available online. It's like a vending machine. You choose a vehicle, you buy it, it gets delivered to you. And uh, if you're not happy with that vehicle, then there's a proper return policy in place. So you're not taking great risk and, 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 and are left alone and in trouble if you're not happy with that vehicle. And, and that's what, where we want to go. Uh, I don't think um, South Africa is... is, is um, um, at the same state of readiness as some of these first world countries, but uh, there are certainly a, a, a big portion of consumers out there who's, who's willing to, to try it out and risk it. So we will offer both of those channels to our consumers and see how they adopt. Um, but it's certainly a, a channel that we feel um, will be the prominent one in future. Uh, you know, COVID has done one thing. It's accelerated our, our digital adoption, hasn't it? We, we're now far more comfortable. My mom, who uh, wouldn't buy anything online, is now ordering from uh, Checkers 6060 or Woolies Dash. and uh, It's just now become uh, part of our everyday life. And, and so a natural progression that. Uh, when it comes to mistakes, what are some of the mistakes that uh, first-time buyers tend to make in the vehicle market? If you could share some good advice for the first-time buyer out there. Oh, there are so many mistakes. Um, look, I, I think the first thing uh, or the first biggest mistake uh, people make is, is they are being too impulsive and, and they, they see a vehicle they like. Uh, there's a salesman who's really slick and just talks you into that car. And, and then you make a choice that you regret later. So, so the right thing to do at the onset of, of your journeys is to assess your needs and, and, and really think and apply your mind to what you want to achieve with owning a vehicle. Do you really need a car in the first place? Um, but in our country, it's, it's an aspirational thing. You know, to, to a lot of people, owning a vehicle uh, um, has got a lot to do with your status uh, in society. Uh, uh, so it's a lot different from what you would find in, in a country like the UK. Um, so, so owning a vehicle is a, is a real milestone for clients and making that right choice uh, initially, you know, will save you a lot of tears. Um, <clears throat> so make sure that you, you have the right needs, but do not only consider the, the asking price of the vehicle. Um, uh, we see clients buy vehicles and only phoning the insurance companies afterwards to find out what the premium would be, for instance. I mean, uh, vehicles insurance, you will have two vehicles on the floor or a couple of vehicles on the floor for 100,000 Rand, but the insurance premiums are way different. So yeah. that's certainly something to con consider. Um, maintenance, whether the vehicle has a maintenance plan. So using the 100,000 Rand example again, you know, you can go and buy a very nice old E-Class Mercedes-Benz for a hundred thousand rand. But it's got hundreds of, of kilometers on light. One to buy that vehicle, it looks flashy, but the more responsible choice would be to buy the Kia Picanta that's two or three years for the same money and more reliable. So so yeah. making, making the right choice and considering 
all the costs, uh, I would say, is, is probably the biggest mistake. You know, people don't, just don't focus on that. Absolutely. What are those new tires going to cost you on that uh, flashy new SUV and the services, out of service plan, all of that? Now, we, we're talking at a very uh, disturbing and distressing time in the country with uh, the, the riots which have sprung up uh, in response to the imprisonment of former President Zuma. They do seem to have taken on a life of their own. Have you been impacted? And what are your thoughts as an entrepreneur, as a business leader, uh, witnessing uh, such disturbing and distressing scenes for the country? Yes, it's it's certainly worrying, and and we have unfortunately um, been influenced directly um, through these riots. Um, our um, branch in KZN in Durban, Springfield, sits right next to that macro, and that's the macro that everyone sees on TV, burning and being looted um, uh, on Monday, and as well as yesterday. And and we're very fortunate, uh, so we had to close the branch down and make sure that our cars are protected. Um, um, and fortunately, our premises weren't looted, but the branch is closed for, for the foreseeable future at the moment until the, the cleanup happens and, and we're allowed to, to reopen. Um, but uh, luckily, all our staff are, are safe. Uh, we're still worried. You know, some of them are, are, are pretty much trapped in their neighborhoods. They, they can't go anywhere. And, and they're worried, you know, they've only got X amount of food supply in their homes, they've got no fuel. Um, they're very uh, uncertain as to what's going to, to happen and how this will play out. Um, today, we've, we've seen that things are probably turning for the better, um, but it's still early days. Uh, I'm not going to make any assumptions at the moment, um, but we're going to stay positive. Uh, we'll help with the cleanup there and, and, and get things running as soon as possible. Which leads to the question about the future of this country. Are you comfortable about the future? Do you think the travel of direction is uh, at least going to lead us to a place where if we look back in 10 years' time, say 2030, the, the goals of the National Development Plan, many of them I think are touch and go as to whether we'll reach them, but will South Africa be in a better place than we find ourselves today? Um, that's a good question, and, and we'll always stay positive. Uh, I think that if you're in South Africa, you, you have to stay positive. Um, otherwise, uh, you're not going to make it, and, and we'll stay positive. And I do really believe that, that this country now is going to make a turn for the better. We've, we've learned some really, really hard lessons the hard way, um, but uh, I think there's, there's enough um, uh, reason for us to, to be positive and, and to, to really be believe that the future is going to be better. You know, that's mm. what people want. And, and uh, what we've seen uh, is, is communities rising up and, 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 and saying enough is enough. Uh, let's fix this. You know, um, I, I think that we do have a, a leadership vacuum um, that needs to be addressed um, and, and, and better communication between business and government. Uh, will solve the problem, but it, it's not going to be easy. I think a lot of damage has been done and and it, it will take time. Um, you know, COVID, COVID influenced uh, the economy uh, in a bad way, but uh, I think what happened over the last week uh, has an even more damaging effect. Um, um, but yeah, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of opportunities um, lying and, and waiting to be pursued um, yeah. in, in, in these times. Uh, at least we have the institutional strength of the constitutional courts not bowing before political pressure and uh, hopefully uh, the ruling party not bowing to uh, calls to release the former president either, either and calls for a political solution. It's that institutional strength. Yes, it's painful, but that is going to see us through into a brighter tomorrow. That's certainly my firmly held belief. When it comes to advice for entrepreneurs in an environment like this, uh, what advice would you have for them to keep them going uh, from your 20-odd uh, years building We Buy Cars, uh, what got you through some of those sleepless nights? Yes, uh, well, if I have to give advice to a young entrepreneur, um, I, I think the most important thing is, is, is to make sure that you find something that you love and do that. Uh, I mean, to, to start a career or a business, um, in something that you, you're not really passionate about won't work. And, and so once, you, once you've, you've found that one thing that you like doing and so on, um, I, I think it's important to be, to be really patient and keep on reinvesting in your own business. Um, and, and with that, I mean, you know, really 
investing your time in your business. Don't, don't, uh, you know, be distracted by other stuff. And, and, and by investing, I mean, getting expertise in learning more and more about your business and, and reinvest your own money into your business. Um, we've never paid any dividends until very recently in our business. We, we've never taken elaborate holiday trips or overseas trips or, or, or anything like that. You know, we've, we've always been very, very conservative in what we took out of the business. And simply because we knew that was the best place to put our money. Um, and, and it really paid dividends for us. So, um, yeah, uh, for that first 15 years, we very seldomly went on a holiday. Um, I'm actually ashamed of this, but one year someone phoned me on Christmas Day and I, and I went to buy the vehicle on Christmas Day. So, so that, that's, that, that was the mindset, you know, when, uh, when, when, you, you, when we worked and drove around, you know, late, late afternoon, you'll be tr- returning home. Um, and, and as you drive into your neighborhood, your phone would ring and, and it would be a client in Benoni phoning you saying, yeah. I want to sell my car. And you turn around and you drive back there. So that's a sort of commitment you need. So, so being committed and, and really staying focused, you know, thinking about your business all the time and, 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 and looking for areas for improvement, you know, always being somewhat um, dissatisfied with, with your own situation and, 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 and the status quo of your business, knowing that you can do things a lot better and, and having the sense of urgency to, to change that. And uh, patience, patience, you know, the, 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 the young generation today wants instant gratification. You know, they, they aren't patient. They, they want things now. And, uh, and, and uh, it takes time. It, it took us a long time. That first 10 years, we grew really slowly. And, and people only started noticing us uh, in the last 10 years. So, so um, you have to grind a bit. Um, but eventually, you'll get there. And you'll become Same an expert. Thing. Fantastic. Overnight success that takes 20 odd years. And I think, uh, you know, without that passion, you're not going to be able to find the motivation to drive through the walls, to work on a Christmas day if you have to, and and to make all of those sacrifices. I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Find that passion firstly, and then execute on everything else as well. Fine, Van der Velt, it's been an absolute treat sharing your journey and your story on uh, the uh, on, on business tech here and business talk uh, and, and really wish you everything of the best in your new partnership with Transaction Capital, the market expecting really big things. So thanks for your time. Thank you, Michael.